Did you know that a $20 billion airport built on an artificial island is sinking into the sea? Kansai International Airport, a modern marvel in Osaka Bay, faces an unexpected battle as parts of its island foundation sink faster than anticipated. Despite its innovative design and state-of-the-art technology, this crucial hub is gradually descending. But what went wrong? And can it be saved? And how long can this engineering wonder stay above water? Let's find out. Before Dubai's artificial islands captured the imagination of the world's media, Japan was the vanguard of giant engineering projects. Perhaps the most notable is Kansai International Airport, or KIX, in the middle of Osaka Bay, a project noted as the most expensive civil engineering scheme ever devised. It was hoped that KIX would handle the high population density and heavy air traffic in the Asia-Pacific area. Infrastructure had to multiply several times over, with Tokyo's population rising above 14 million. Today, the country has nearly 100 airports managed by both central and local governments. Among the busiest are Haneda International Airport, Narita International Airport, Kansai International Airport, and Fukuoka International Airport. Together, these four hubs see almost 200 million passengers annually. But why did Japan choose to build KIX on an artificial island, knowing it could face sinking issues. In the 1960s, the Kansai province of Japan found itself lagging behind Tokyo in business, sparking the idea of a new airport near Kobe and Osaka. The existing Itami Airport was bursting at the seams and couldn't expand further due to congestion. Expanding Itami was also prohibitively expensive. Meanwhile, Narita Airport faced fierce protests over land expropriation. So what was the solution? An offshore airport. City officials rejected the initial plan to build near Kobe, pushing the project to the southern part of Osaka Bay. This location not only provided space, but also allowed the airport to operate 24-7, a significant advantage. With necessary approvals in hand, the project was estimated to cost around $1 billion. Moreover, this new airport was part of a larger initiative to rejuvenate Osaka, which Tokyo had overshadowed for over a century. The chosen site for Kansai International Airport was 5 kilometers off the coast of Honshu, Japan's largest island and about 38 kilometers southwest of Osaka. But how exactly did engineers create an entire artificial island to house this massive airport? The ambitious plan for Kansai International Airport included the creation of an artificial island measuring four kilometers long and two and a half kilometers wide. Significant risks the engineers had to mitigate included earthquakes and typhoons, with storm surges reaching up to three meters. The site had a water depth of 18 meters atop 20 meters of soft Holocene clay, which contained 70% water. To address this, a million sand drains were inserted into the clay to remove water and solidify it. Construction began in 1987, and by 1989, the seawall, composed of rocks and 48,000 tetrapods, was completed. The project required excavating three mountains to provide 21 million cubic meters of earth, contributing to the total 180 million cubic meters used to build the island. This monumental task spanned three years and involved 10,000 workers, 80 ships, and 10 million work hours. The end result was a 30 to 40 meter thick layer of earth over the sea floor within the seawall. In 1990, a three kilometer bridge was constructed connecting the island to the mainland at Rinku town, costing $1 billion. This expansion slightly increased Osaka prefecture's area, preventing it from being the smallest prefecture in Japan. But how did the airport's designers plan to address the island's inevitable sinking? Despite predictions that the island would sink by 5.7 meters, it had sunk 8.2 meters by 1999, nearly 50% more than anticipated. This became the most expensive civil engineering project in modern history after 20 years of planning, 3 years of construction, and $15 billion in investment. In 1991, construction began on the terminal, designed with adjustable columns to counteract the island's sinking. These columns could be extended by inserting thick metal plates at their bases. Government officials wanted to shorten the terminal to save money, but the architects stood firm on keeping it at full length. Kansai International Airport officially opened on September 4th, 1994. Just a few months later, in January 1995, Japan was rocked by an earthquake called the Great Hanshin. The airport lay in the heart of the quake, just 20 kilometers from its epicenter. But amazingly, it made it through, thanks to its earthquake-resistant design and sliding joints. The windows, too, remained intact. Then on September 22nd, 1998, the airport survived a typhoon with winds over 130 miles per hour. In recognition of its engineering marvel, the airport was honored on April 19th. 2001 as a civil engineering monument of the millennium by the American Society of Civil Engineers. By 2008, the total cost of Kansai Airport had reached $20 billion, covering land reclamation, two runways, terminals, and facilities. Most of these extra costs came from dealing with the island's sinking, 
challenge the designers had anticipated. However, things worsened on September 4, 2018, when Typhoon Jebby hit. The storm brought a massive surge of seawater, flooding much of the island. Reports indicated that water levels rose high enough to reach the plane's engines parked at the airport. While this flooding was a significant challenge, the real crisis occurred when a large tanker slammed into the island's only bridge during the rough seas. The damage was severe, forcing the airport to close. It took almost a month for regular service to fully resume, with operations not returning to normal until October 1st, 2018. Now, what does the future hold for this incredible engineering feat? During the initial construction phase, engineers underestimated the rate and depth at which Kansai International Airport would sink. Despite recognizing the inevitability of the sinking issue, they significantly miscalculated. At the time of its opening, KIX had already sunk 38 feet, although engineers had predicted it would sink between 19 and 25 feet. Unfortunately, they settled on the lower estimate of 19 feet. A costly mistake. Now, despite efforts to slow the sinking of Kansai International Airport, the problem continues and its future remains uncertain. Experts generally agree that stopping the sinking entirely is unlikely. Some think the airport could last another 100 years, while others believe it might become unusable by the 2050s or even sooner. One significant problem is the uneven sinking rate. The area around the center of Terminal 1 is sinking faster than almost any other part of the island. This discrepancy complicates efforts to stabilize the entire structure, but could there be any innovative solutions engineers are considering to tackle it? In recent years, the Japanese government has announced plans to raise the seawall even higher, a strategy that may need to become a regular practice. With billions already invested in KIX, abandoning the airport isn't an option. Authorities and engineers continually battle to keep the airport operational and safe despite the relentless sinking challenge. And you know what adds to the uncertainty? The threat of mega typhoons, which could potentially devastate the islands. This beautifully constructed airport sits on 250 square kilometers of fill, gradually sinking into Osaka Bay. The clock is ticking for this marvel of human ingenuity. How long will it hold up? Only time will tell. As we wrap up, the question remains, how long can human ingenuity keep it afloat? Will the innovative solutions and constant adjustments be enough to secure its future, or are we witnessing a losing fight against nature? Share your thoughts and let us know what you think in the comments below.